and this is my 2005 Dodge Sprinter 118 inch wheelbase low top conversion. We got a uh, tongue and groove cedar. So for storage, we got these cabinets here. So this is where the water tank is stored. And how do you fill it up? Um, well, I'll show you that on the other side. And for this system, I use magnets that just close on the metal there. Keep it closed. That way it shuts in there and doesn't come out while driving. This is an excellent storage spot, um, you know, for bowl kitchen items. Yeah, you could fit an Instapot in there. You could fit all kinds of tall things in there. You could even put another shelf in there or pull out drawer. Yep, multi-shelf it. This is just to get into the water system in case any emergencies or anything. I keep uh, spare paper towels, some Clorox wipes. And uh, this last one here, I use it as my laundry chute. So I just toss things in there. It makes it really easy, keeps it organized. And then I can just pull things out when I need to get to the wash. So, And what about this cupboard under here? Uh, same thing. So the water tank comes all across. Now, what about these cupboards? How do they open and close and stay closed? Um, they're just standard cupboards, and they have RV catches. So they, they get stuck in there, and then they, they don't come out. And this is nice how you have the the gray painted in the middle. It almost looks like that smoky glass. So this is a kitchen area. This is a second thing we bought to just stand in here to keep the pots drying and not running around anywhere. And it drains down into the sink, which is nice. Oh, that's a that. deep sink. And uh, we got a 12 volt. RV pump here that just went out actually. C flow, I'm not getting one of those again. I'm gonna get a sure flow now and uh, replace it with a sure flow. It pulls the water from the tank, goes up here, goes to a splitter actually, this sends water to the shower and then the other water gets sent up to the sink here. Okay, and how do you get in there to, to work on it? Is there more access to it? Um, no, I, I can get in and work really easily. This actually a lot of space. Just seems tighter than it is. And then your faucet, what are the features of your faucet? Um, it just has two sprays and extends out. I see that you have a, a counter here or a, a surface here. What is that for? Uh, this is a little chair for cooking, oh. sink area, you know, to access things. You need to get in the fridge, drawers. It's kind of the hangout spot. Okay, so I built a few vans and I... Uh, first time, of course, we just used coolers and ice, and that got really annoying. And then we started putting in fridges, but then you got a propane fridge, 12 volt fridge, Dometic, lift fridge. But I came across these um, fridges they use for like trailer trucks and semis. This is a fridge, the Frigio, Vitrifrigio, and then Dometic also makes a similar one. And it's just a normal open your door, small little 12 volt fridge. It's really efficient, keeps everything cool, has a little freezer section, and uh, we like to put that in use because it makes buying vegetables, keeping stored, storing stuff a lot easier, catch up with simple stuff, and it's been really helpful. And it doesn't use much power at all. We don't. I have a big battery bank, but it doesn't even touch it. So I think it's like 40 watts. It runs on 40 watts, so pretty amazing. This is my spot. And the whole purpose of this pot is so that we can get grilling. Oh, look at it. It's a built-in hub. Yeah. So, well, the gas isn't on, but we got propane here, gas grill here. So the propane is in this box here? Yeah. Just pull it out. And that way we can turn it on and off just for each cooking session. That way it's not a... Uh, being leaked into the house. Very easy to get to. Easier than when it's buried under the kitchen, uh, under the sink cabinet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, in a class B. And you can just, and I see you can also sit on there. That's yeah, it's a secondary chair for a guest or if you want to sit there on a, to get some breeze. So if you wanted, it's another chair. So two little sitting areas just to make the space work. Does your seat swivel? Oh, that is something I have on my to-do list. Definitely 
as I go on with this build, I'll get a swivel, maybe even for both. I don't know if it will swivel. Don't think so, but at least for this ca uh, captain's or the uh, passenger chair, I'll get a swivel. And you have integrated lights too. Yeah, those are 12 volt recessed lighting. They're dimmable actually, so you can have them. Oh, nice. And then, ooh, is that a ceiling fan? Yep, that's a fantastic fan. It's got three speeds. Just gonna open it up. And it's really nice because it it goes both ways. So if you ever want to run the AC, it's you have it here in the suck, and you can close up the van, throw the AC on, and it'll pull the AC up through the van and cool you down in the summer because it's pretty hot right now. But it works. You can feel it, the breeze change already. It's really powerful. Oh yeah, that's a nice temperature. So the bed is a trifold mattress, about four inches thick, and it folds up, and the underneath is just boarding I, to prevent buildup of mold and mildew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moisture. Exactly. And this is storage area. So once you get the bed folded up on the left here. You pull just this one panel out, the bed, and underneath has a shower. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Wow. Oh. And if you're not a van shower, of course, you could just use it for uh, storage or something, but I'm what? an early morning shower myself, so I like to use it. So you start the day in your van without having to leave it, taking a shower. Yes. Under your bed. Full water pressure. It's really amazing. So we just throw the curtains up. And we have this light switch here just for the shower. Uh, yeah. So, of course, unless you're in the forest, which I had showered with the door open like that, which is really cool. It was like in the forest. I really like that. But, um, of course, mainly for privacy, I have these really good curtains. And they are really thick, insulated. And they give you a lot of privacy. You got two in the back window here, so you got a lot of extra room to play with. And they black out really easily. And I imagine they help keep it cooler in here, too. Absolutely. They are very thick. They're doubled up. So they're folded over and doubled up. So they do, they're well insulated. You could always throw something even in the middle if you wanted to insulate it more. And then what about your shower curtain? Is that what these hooks are for? Yeah, the shower curtain just hangs... Just get the curtain, follow the hooks, and that way keep the bed and bed area dry, and uh, you don't have to worry so much when you're spraying. You can go all out, have a nice, comfortable shower. Look at that! There's two of them. It goes all the way around, so. Wow, who came up with this ingenious design? Oh, I've seen similar builds. I've, I've built one before where the shower is recessed into the floor and has a similar curtain, but with the high walls of the bath, this makes it a lot easier. So it's my first bath design, but it was pretty cool. I thought, I thought it worked pretty well, even though I didn't use this for a bath yet. I still have my Epsom salt and essential oils ready, but... Um, and um, is this an RV tub? Yeah, this is a this is an RV tub. It uh, a lot smaller than a normal tub for sure. You could still fit in it. You did. You're making a lot out of this small space. Yeah. Uh, this is the 118 wheelbase. Yeah. So I think from back to front, there's I want to say 10 feet exactly of space, and it's not quite six feet wide. So 56 square feet. Around there. And how long have you been living in vans? Um, I've been living in vans for different projects over maybe eight, nine years. And it started as a monk. I would travel and live in vans and sell spiritual literatures like Bhagavad Gita. And from maintenance man to builder, I just built a few of them and traveled in them. And I really like these sprinters, especially the five cylinder. It's a really cool vehicle. And, um, this size is small, but I tried to do my best with uh, what you got here. So what is the your van insulated with? Um, 
I insulated all the sides with Jean recycled Jean insulation that they have at Lowe's or Home Depot. And it's nice, comes in these sheets, water resistant and very insula high insulation value and it's recycled, non-toxic. So that's what I use for the insulation. Did you do the insulation yourself? Yeah, I did the build from scratch myself. Okay. So you can see, we like to joke that the van makes you be humble because mm. you're forced to take a <laughs> humble position. <laughs> So here's the shower from the back view. So the lid, the lid is open. The lid is open on it. Yeah, this is with the lid open in shower mode. Look at that. Plenty of storage. I got my mats and rollerblades up here on the side. Good for yoga mats and different mats up in here. I got some beach chairs. Got a bunch of stuff stored here because I'm moving up from Florida to New York, so I had some things with me. The North in the apartment. So are you selling the van? Yeah, currently the van is for sale. I'm stationing myself in New York City and I have an apartment, so I'm trying to sell it. It's really hard to move for street cleaning. I would keep it, but since I don't have plans to do van life so much in the future, I'm trying to sell it. So if anybody's interested, reach out. So this is the electrical system here. We got three 55 amp. AGM batteries, like the deep cell uh, RV batteries, marine RV batteries. And it's, it's circuited there. You can't really see so much, but we got a fuse system. It's got a, a major fuse there, charge controller. And then we got a little 500 watt pure sine wave inverter from Victron Energy. It helps with laptop stuff like that. Yeah, the pure sine wave is important for certain appliances, right, and electronics. Yeah, yeah, especially like laptops, charges, stuff like that. So that's mainly for laptops, small electronics. And then uh, I see you have you also camp a little bit. Oh, yep. I, I always keep a good. You never know when it's going to get cold. You guys keep a good sleeping bag around. Yeah, so there's plenty of storage under here. Yeah, this is the back side of the drawers on the other side, but yeah, for its size, plenty of storage. This whole area is like a lane, but I keep this suitcase here to kind of keep it organized. Got my things in there, so. And then you you added this mesh to yeah. the door. So, um, if you ever have any sweaters, any towels, you want to just throw down in there. Oh, that's handy. On both sides here, I just put the. Oh, and this is where you're keeping your shower curtain. Yeah, you can dry right out the bottom here. Oh. Oh, that's clever. So um, we got three 55 amp batteries and I actually have way too much solar on there for that. It's 280 watts. I was looking to put maybe two, 300 amps of battery power, lithium eventually, but those are brand new batteries. So I'm not doing it for a few years, but it's got like 260 watts of solar, one 160 watt panel and one 100 watt panel. And then that's coming down to the charge controller and charging the batteries. This is your cab. What what model is this? This is a 2005 Dodge Sprinter 2500 118 inch wheelbase. Um, it's got a really cool engine that's really popular amongst diesel heads because it's just a really reliable engine. Mercedes, I think it's a 2.7 liter diesel, a uh, five cylinder diesel. It's, turbo and it, it runs really well it's zippy gets really good gas mileage on the way up here we got like 25 miles to gallon from florida on this and um can't really beat that nowadays it's a fun little van to drive it has a really cool cruise control just set it and that's it when it go down you can literally drive from the cruise control a lot of people drive their sprinters from it and it's really fun good. And you have the uh, CD player. Yeah, that's an old one. It's got to get replaced. But the speakers I did replace, but they're notoriously tiny, so it doesn't make much sound. So what I've been doing is using my JBL here. And I got it Velcroed up there, so you just stoop, and you got a nice, cool speaker system. Oh, that's brilliant. And you just hook that up to your phone. And you have it up Bluetooth to your phone, so you got everything going. And it works better than the speakers and the things. So even if I change this, which you could, but again, it's they're notorious for having really small, bad speakers. 
Well, so instead of, I guess that principle also applies to newer vehicles. It might even be an option instead of paying an extra thousand dollars for a great speaker system in the vehicle, just get yourself a good Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, if you if you got a good one, it sounds really good. So now over here, I see that you have selectable gears. Do you, how many gears can you select? Oh, it's five gears. And how low is it geared for uh, when you're going downhill and you need to downshift? You can go all the way first. And does it grip the road when you're going down? It does help. Um, I don't like to use it so much unless you really need it because, of course, I don't want to put any strain on the transmission. But it does help on those steeper roads that you get around here. But I'm a Florida boy. I typically hadn't seen many. And we followed the beach all the way up here. But... For the steep routes that we have been, if you need to, especially coming down here, you throw it in second or first, really help you get that grab coming down. Now your seats, uh, what what are the seats? Are these... Um, Walmart covers, non-swivel right now, but they're the original spinner seats, and we put these nice colorful covers on them, put some rugs down, make it more homey as it's now a home. And it looks like they do tilt. Uh, you can tilt, uh, you can adjust your pelvis. Yeah, you can adjust the seat level up. There we got some action here. You tilt, we got a tilt here. And then we got, of course, the main tilt. Great. Great. And the footwell is really generous. Um, you don't have the, the interference from the wheel well uh, squeezing in your, your legs. It's a really wide space there yeah it's a really comfortable ride especially for the passenger there like you said you just have so much room you feel like you're in open space it's where's nice. where's your emergency brake uh this is it right here it's got these brake here it's pull it up when you need it mm -hmm. i might as well show you this i got this going on i'm gonna install it but it is a rear view camera and you attach it to the back and that's gonna go right up here so, especially for that New York City parking, get in those tight spots. <laughs> All right, well, good news. The driver's side is also spacious. The wheel well is nice and shallow and uh, wide. Uh, and and the, the, the space between it and the accelerator pedal is nice and wide. So you could stretch your legs out here really easily. Um, this, is, this is a great cab. And um, then your visors are here. Now, there's no headliner. I mean, bulkhead. There's no bulkhead. Nope. Um, but you do have a headliner there, which is nice. Yep. And you could add a little bulkhead, but since it's those low top, you wouldn't get much. You get like, but you could still do a little bulkhead for some coats and stuff. Yeah, it does seem like you could. Towels, blankets. Yeah, it definitely seems like you could get away with that. And then... Here's the curtain behind you. How did you attach your curtain, your privacy curtain? Uh, this one is really simple. It's just some curtain rod holders in the curtain. And um, this is the, the heavy strength kitchen curtain. So you just zip it tight. And i got my uh, visor here. But you just shut it right through. And you can uh, play with it to get perfect privacy on the sides. But it's a good size. Definitely helps with the privacy. Uh, one thing I picked up on the road, really useful to have, is some magnets. Uh, especially in curtains, you're doing city life, you want to make sure it's really, really stealth. I just get it right to the edge there and throw some magnets up. Keep it on the line. That way you can really black out your van. And uh, eventually I'm going to glue these in here or stitch them in. But for now, I just use them externally. So just before I left Florida, about 30,000 miles ago, I bought these Firestones Destinations. They are great. It's a very smooth ride, brand new. The tread's still like original pretty much, 3,000 miles on a 60,000 mile tire. So just getting started on those. And then back around this side is where we fill the water holding tank, fresh water. Um, just any typical hose, put it in there. And the storage spot I keep for our fill hose is over here in the door. It's a nice little secret storage spot. 
and it's a nice little flexible hose I keep in there. Oh, that's clever. With a valve on NOS valve, makes it a lot easier for filling because you can have it plugged in and turned on and then just turn it on when you get to the van. And easy, makes life on the road, you know, filling waters maybe kind of the most annoying thing in van life because you guys, I've done some sneaky missions. I hope there's no uh, municipal boards looking for me for stealing municipal water, but it's only 30 gallons at a time. I hope they'll forgive me. <laughs> Actually, on the Blue Wonder Lady channel, you could see a video on that I called Stealth Water. Okay. And it's about um, stealthfully taking water, borrowing. Borrowing. Because we do give water back in oh, yeah. certain form. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> We're not stealing any of it. <laughs> So that's good. So you have the water intake. Yep. And um, in the back, we do got a hitch. So um, luckily, we got this cool tire rack. So we got some extra storage down here. But it came with this hitch, really strong hitch. And it's a pretty. You, you've got your brake um, light hook up here, too. Yep. And your turn signal hook up there. Yep. So this is the trailer kit. Yes, this is full trailer kit. You want to pull something. I don't know how much this can pull. It's not the 3,500. It's not a dually, so I don't know, maybe 5,000 pounds. That's my guess. That's, that's plenty. And you have this really nice cover. And then for your trailer, um, do you have the trailer mirrors as well? Um, extended mirrors? We just have these wide lens mirrors. Helps you get a better vision. Yeah, so this is um, legally required when you're pulling a trailer. I knew that. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your mirror here. <laughs> it's a really big mirror. It's a standard sprinter mirror. Works good. See a lot of stuff. It does have a really big angle. You can see a lot, especially with the wide lens. So it makes straight. This is the shorter one, so it's not really hard to drive, but sometimes with the bigger ones, you want a little bigger vision. There we go. Okay. Let's take a look at the engine here. So you have uh, your Duracell battery. Yeah, it's actually new from this year when I went off the trip, got a new battery. Okay. So this is a five-cylinder Sprinter diesel, but the cool thing about it is that Bosch turbocharger right there that really gets this thing pumping and gets you moving fast. So you can get out of the way of the semis. And yeah, actually, this thing for its size and everything has really big pickup. It's it's really fun to drive if you haven't driven a five cylinder Sprinter, especially a small one with little weight on it. It's really fun for a van. You know, you're not in a Porsche here, but. AC works good. Cold AC is really important in the summer. And yeah, 223 miles, 1,000 miles. It's a Florida title, clean, never had any salt on it. It's never spent a winter out of Florida. It's got no rust on it. I mean, expect really tiny spots, that's natural, but. And it's in really good shape. Florida vehicles keep their, um, Value good because of the weather. There's no rust on the bottom. No rust on the bottom. The only, the only rust it had was on the windshield, but we that was the first thing I did when I got it was fix all of it. Start with a weekend trip. Don't start, you know, full time in it. Maybe see if you like it first. Try it. Don't knock it too. Try it. Proof is in the pudding. Go out there, experience it. It's really nice. After the third day, you really feel the I'm home. Like, it's nice. I've got to see a lot of America, a lot of the world that I've never would ever see unless I had the ability to travel and live in a cool vehicle like this. 
Well, I hope you found this tour helpful and inspiring. I know I did. If you have any questions for Adam or you're interested in purchasing this vehicle or just any comments about the build, please leave them below in the comment section. And you can also click on any of the links in the playlist for the test drives to see test drives of vans or the tour playlist. You'll see some of those links on the screen here as well. So thanks for being with us today and remember, you can do it. Enjoy your journey. <laughs>